Okay, let's get realistic here, folks. Let's talk about a couple things. And I notice a lot of people were talking about this on boards. And they were talking about it in relationship to the many, many, many videos I've made on the Fuji X-T2. Let's get realistic, okay? Let's be logical, live long and prosper, right? And sensible about the Fuji X-T2 versus like the Nikon D500. Here's a D500, there's a D500. Here is one of the awesome lenses for the Nikon D500, the 200 to 500 millimeter. This lens is so crazy that I can actually, and I proved it in a video, shoot at 500 millimeters at 1 13th of a second. Amazing uh, image stabilization, amazing reach. Yes, the autofocus tracking on the Fuji blasts the D500, okay? Period. Flat out, boom. Yes, it does blast the D500. Um, so that's wonderful. Does that mean that somebody that's using this lens or like a 300 millimeter 2.8 or 400 millimeter f4 or 500 millimeter that's doing a sports action wildlife is going to be dropping their Nikon D5 or D500 for the Fuji X-T2? The answer to that is uh, hell no, obviously not. The glass like this and glass like 300 millimeter 2.8 which I've got in the back room and the 400 millimeter, which is a gigantic monster I've also got in the back room. No, that glass don't exist for Fuji. Yes, the D500, uh, excuse me, the uh, Fuji X-T2 is faster at autofocus. Right? There are some amazing customizations. The eye, by the way, just as a side note, the eye autofocus, where it can, you can actually choose for it to actually pick the left eye or the right eye. Um, uh, for uh, autofocusing, especially to really shallow depth of field, for it is stunning. It is not a gimmick feature on the Fuji XT2. That was orgasmic. Okay, this lens is orgasmic with a Nikon. Okay, oh yeah, does not exist for the Fuji. I could actually stick this on the Fuji, but it would be manual focus with no vibration reduction. Obviously, so. Okay, so we have to be realistic here. So the point is, is well, is the autofocus tracking better on the XT2 than the D5 or the D500? Yes, it is. Does that mean that anybody on the sidelines is going to be dropping their Nikon D500, or, or am I? Hell no. People keep asking me that. So, well, now that the X-T2 is confirmed to be faster than autofocus tracking than the Nikon D500, of which you got a couple of right here, are you going to be dropping it? And the answer is no. There's no perfect camera. Fuji does not have the glass in that arena. Fuji has the 50 to 140, which I also have, which is basically the equivalent of the 70 to 200 2.8 Nikkor or the Tamron 7200 2.8. But, you know, there are different arenas here. We have to talk about low-light autofocus acquisition, the actual buffer. This is rocking two SD cards. This one has an XQD card in it. Um, the tracking does blast it, but that doesn't mean that this is now a replacement for the Nikon uh, D500 or the Nikon D5. It's obviously not. Um, this is the reason why somebody that's shooting on the side of a football, basketball game, you know, rocking a lens like this, they're not going to be going, oh, wow, I just confirmed that the autofocus tracking is way faster on the X-T2, and that's awesome, girl. That's awesome. But that doesn't, you know, there's no glass, you know. You can't be sticking this on this. Am I making my point really, really clear here? This is why there's no perfect camera, and this is why it's like, well, no, I'm going to drop this now for this. No, because I can't stick this on this, and the glass for this camera does not exist in this flavor, or the huge flavors like the 400s and the 300 millimeter two eights does not exist yet. Whether Fuji makes that in the future, they might make like a 200 millimeter f2, which would be equivalent of a 300 millimeter f2, which will be awesome. If Fuji makes that, that will be great. And uh, then that will be really, really cool. That will be like a game changer where you could actually say, hey, I could use this on the side of a football or basketball game. But still, it would be a 300 millimeter F2 uh, equivalent. So the answer is no. You know, you don't ditch one for the other. And ethically, I never tell anybody. Every, people always ask me, should I sell this camera and buy this camera? I never, I say, I never answer those questions because that's stupid, it's dumb for me to do that, it's unethical. I, I don't tell people like, yeah, you need to sell that piece of crap and buy this piece of crap. Or I now tell somebody like, yeah, this is a new camera, your camera is a piece of crap, go off and sell it. I don't tell people to sell their cameras, okay? I don't do that. I also don't tell people to subscribe to my channel either, you know? 
I'm here to be helpful and useful. It actually burns a hole in my soul. It pisses me off personally. If I were to tell someone and go out and buy something and I said something wrong about it or it was a dumb, bad piece of gear and they were unhappy with it, people work hard for their money. I'm not stupid. I may be a schmuck sometimes and whatnot, but I never want somebody to like take their hard-earned money and go out and buy you know, a piece of junk um, off a recommendation that I said was wrong and I would never tell anybody to like sell their beloved camera so they can go jump ship to something new. I don't do that. It's unethical and stupid. And so the ultimate answer in the summation of this video is is the X-T2 a replacement for the Nikon D500 or D5? And the answer is yes and no. If you're a travel photographer, uh, I would say, uh, hell yes. Like if someone had an X-T1 and they're like traveling Europe and, you know, the X-T1 just sucks ass uh, on uh, autofocus, especially moving subjects. Those sort of people and other things, people are going to be really, really, really happy on the Fuji X-T2. The X-T2 is, is a top value. I give it a 10 out of 10. People keep asking me, and I've actually been trying to pick my brain. It's like, well, is there something pissy about the X-T2 that you don't like? And I'm not a Kool-Aid drinker. I'm not a fanboy. I'm always, I'll point out a flaw on something if I find it. And I've been picking my brain. I want to actually say something. I actually want to say there's something pissy about this damn Fuji X-T2 that I don't like. I love the rest of it, but this pisses me off. You know? I, I actually do. And I keep, I keep, keep asking me that. It's, I don't have an answer. I'm trying to pick the camera apart. I've been shooting with it now for three days. And I've been, I've been shooting it hard. I've been pounding it. And I have nothing to complain about. And that never happens with me. That's kind of like, you know, someone from Colombia that's never seen snow before or something. It's like, I don't know what the hell to do. You know, there's nothing for me to bitch about about the camera. You know, I may eventually find something, but I've been trying to find something to bitch about, but I can't. But so, no, the uh, Fuji X-T2 is not a replacement for these cameras and the ginormous honking lenses that go with them. Um... For travel photographers and whatnot, you will have a complete and total camera now, whereas on the X-T1, you definitely did not. It's like, well, great, I'm going to shoot port I'm gonna shoot a portrait or a landscape or architecture, fine, no worries. But you're going to go out to the, you know, the bullfight or you go shoot the race cars or there's an event in town and all these people are dancing down the street and you're trying to capture the action with your X-T2, your X-T1, and you went, shit, I can't do it. Well, you can now. Not only can you, but you can do it better with the X-T2 than you can with an Nikon D500. Just flat out. Autofocus blasts the D500. But the X-T2 doesn't have shit. The X-T2 doesn't have stuff like this. And that's why it's not going to be, at least for the next year or two, and probably not even then. You know, Nikon and Canon have decades uh, bounds ahead of Fuji when it comes to stuff like this right here. So that's the answer there. It's not an either-or situation. It is a yes and yes situation. Yes and yes. Okay? That is the most logical, sensible, intelligent, and wise statement that I could make to answer that question that people keep asking. Well, you're going to sell this for this. You know, which should I buy, this or this? The answer is yes and yes. If you understand the points, and you can make an intelligent, wise decision based upon those facts. Okay? Bye. If you like this video and drop me a buck or two, you can go send me a big, fat, juicy pizza because I love pizzas. That's a fat, that's a, a fat dude, fat guy pornography is to get a pizza dripping with cheese. <laughs> Catch you later. I was just kidding about that. No, I wasn't. Bye.